All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna to be talking about dual energy CP systems. These are all a little bit magical. So we're gonna be making some analogies to the uh, gang over at Hogwarts. What if that gang over at Hogwarts came to your CT system, cast a little spell? What would it do to the CT system? We're gonna be using that kind of analogy to talk through the different ways that you can do dual energy CT. So dual energy CT was a twinkle in Hounsfield eyes even back in 1973. And the idea is that you could get more information than just a standard CT image if you can actually change the color within the acquisition or the detection from your CT system. So if you remember, our CT system is composed of an X-ray source and an X-ray detector. The X-rays travel through the patient and the contrast is generated by the difference between those X-rays that stop in the patient and the X-rays which travel through the patient. So traditionally on our X-ray system, we have one single KVP for our X-ray tube and that's used throughout the whole acquisition. And that is gonna be measured at our detector and that detector is one single detector which is measuring what we call the integration of all the energies that are incident on that detector. So we have a spectrum of energies, not just one given energy, but it's the same for traditional CT. The information about these dual energy CT systems and the pros and the cons that we're gonna present comes from a task group by the AAPM. So it's not just my opinions, it's actually a task group which had industry leaders and academic leaders in CT for dual energy CT. So the first spell I'm gonna talk about is actually Colveria. So Harry Potter used this spell to actually change the color of his teacher's wig. So he changed the color of his teacher's wig to a vivid blue color. So what's happening there is that the wig is now reflecting more blue and your eye is gonna sense more blue and this is actually a change in the energy of the visible photons that are reaching your eye. In the same way, if we change the energy on your X-ray system, it's either produced or that's detected, that's how we can generate dual energy CT images. So you have a couple options on the source side. On your source, you can change the KVP. So the KVP is a knob which controls the potential from the electrons getting accelerated across before they bang into the anode and the x-rays are generated. So a standard spectrum would look something like this at a higher KVP, and you can see the average energy is, you sum up all the energies underneath this spectrum, and that would give you an average energy. You could then change the KVP on your system, and you could get a lower KVP. And by doing so, you would actually be making different measurements on your system for the lower KVP and for the higher KVP. And we've talked in other videos about why the household unit value will change when you change from a higher to a lower KVP. That same information is gonna be used here in dual energy imaging. So the first way to generate information is by changing the KVP. The second way is by changing the filter or something that you place after that X-ray tube. So if you filter out X-rays, that means if you start with a beam that looks like this, and then you put something in there, such as a tin filter, you're gonna end up stopping a lot of the X-rays, but you're gonna be preferentially stopping the lower energy X-rays more. So you get many fewer X-rays through, but you can see the average energy of your X-ray spectrum move to a higher energy. So that's your second way is by using a filter. You can also combine these two ways, but the idea is that you could use either changing the KVP or using a filter. On the other end, you could change the way that your detector works. So you could have an energy dependent readout. We're gonna talk about one of the vendors is actually using an energy dependent readout in order to generate the spectral information. Now we're gonna talk about the different ways that the systems actually work to generate the dual energy information. And so first we're gonna talk about the switching spell. And McGonagall 
called out Long Bottom and said, you probably can't even perform a switching spell. So don't tell the folks at the other school that. And in terms of switching in this scenario, we're talking about fast switching between those different KVPs. We talked about how changing the KVP will change the energy spectrum that's gonna be used. So if you could switch from view to view, go from a high KVP, low KVP, high, low, high, low, then you could use that information in order to reconstruct the dual energy information. So this is the way that a true fast switching CT system will work. Every other view, you'll be going low, high, low, high, low, high. So that is what we call true fast KVP switching. Recently, the concept has been productized to do what we call deep learning switching. So in this scenario, you actually don't have uh, tube hardware, which can switch fast enough to go every other view, but you can still modulate the KVP so that you're changing a little bit more slowly. So you're still doing the concept of going from a high KVP to a low KVP and back to a high KVP, but it takes several views in this scenario. Scenario, you're transitioning the KVP a little bit more slowly so you don't have alternating views, but you can use a black box that we call deep learning in order to estimate what if we did have alternating views where we could do low and high. So you take your KVPs, which are changing a little bit more slowly, and then you put them into a deep learning algorithm and you estimate in the projection space what it would look like if you had low KVP and high KVP projections. The next charm we're gonna talk about is Gemino. And this is what we call the duplicating charm. Hermione used this actually to duplicate Umbridge's charm. And the idea here is that you take something and you can make a replica of that. And that's actually been done on a two tube, two detector system. So they took a standard CT system and they just made a copy of it and rotated it a little bit more than 90 degrees. So the idea here is that you have your traditional CT system and then you have another CT system on the same gantry, which is a little bit smaller. Ideally, it would be just as big, but you can't fit quite all of that on the gantry at the same time. So the second system is actually a little bit smaller. <laughs> so on these two tube, two detector systems, in the first generation, you could image about 26 centimeters in terms of the dual energy capability. And on the second generation, you can image about 33 centimeters in terms of the dual energy capability. Then outside of that, if you have a big lung region, you're gonna lose the ability to do the dual energy imaging. The next spell we wanna talk about is Diffendo. So this is actually a spell that Ron Weasley used. And what he did is he actually used this to sever the sleeves of his shirt before the big ball. And the idea here is what if we did that to the x-ray detector? What if we severed or cut our x-ray detector? So you have your traditional CT that we talked about, which is just one energy integrating detector. If you severed that into two different layers and you read those two different layers out, see our video on CT detectors where we talk more about how that's done. But the idea is that you could read out the lower energy x-rays first on that top layer. And then on the bottom layer, you read out more of the higher energy x-rays. So this is what we call dual layer CT. It's different from all the other approaches where all the other approaches are changing something on the x-ray spectra. In this case, you're changing something on the x-ray detector. There's also something called a thickening charm. And Harry actually used this in grade school to thicken his hair and to make his hair longer. And the idea is in traditional CT, you have actually a filter that we call a bow tie filter. So your x-rays are gonna pass through that. If you haven't seen our video on the components of CT, check that one out where we talk about all the different components. We definitely have a bow tie filter in all of these CT systems. Then if you look at a side view of that, you can see that we have a collimator here and the x-rays are coming out. And if we look at the side view after that bow tie, 
we could add something that we call a flat filter, where part of that filter is aluminum and part of that filter is tin. We talked about before, the tin will take your X-ray spectrum and move it significantly to higher energies. So you could use this wherein for one projection, the top and the bottom of the detector will be reading out different spectra. This is what's called a split filter approach. It does have some disadvantages in terms of the fact that you have to do what we call a relatively low pitch. See our video on helical versus axial imaging if you wanna know more about pitch. You have to do a relatively low pitch scan in order to basically get this duplicated measurements. So it's kind of like the opposite of the two tube two detector system, where in the two tube two detector system, in some modes, you can go really fast because you have these two tubes and two detectors. In this case, you have to take duplicate measurements, so you have to go relatively slowly. In addition, it's a little bit harder to get the x-rays through the patient because you're losing a bunch of the x-ray flux with these filters before they even make it to the patient. And if we go and compare these different systems, can see the different systems we talked about are all here. And we're referencing that APM task group article to get these different values. The only thing that was really missing in there was the deep learning approach because it hadn't yet been commercially introduced. So at that time, that vendor just had a rotate, rotate approach. And subsequently, they've added this deep learning approach. So all of these different methods in order to generate the dual energy imaging are appropriate for doing full field of view with the exception of the dual source scanner. And we talked about why that is. The second copy of the detector just can't be as large as a full detector in order to fit on the gantry. And in terms of the actual acquisitions, the ability to image large patients and to do so quickly, the split filter system is really at a disadvantage there because like we talked about, we're losing a lot of the x-rays with that filter and we have to go at a relatively slow pitch. It's gonna be better for relatively smaller objects and objects which aren't moving so much. In terms of the ability to do quantitative imaging, such as iodine quantification and measuring very small values of iodine in the image. A comparison was done by the MD Anderson group of all these different methodologies, except for that deep learning and projection space. And it was found that really the dual energy and the fast switching approach provided the best results in that scenario. And the worst results were given by the dual layer and the split filter technique. Like we talked about the X-ray spectrum and the ability to change your X-ray spectrum, the dual source system in this scenario has the advantage because it has two different X-ray tubes. So each X-ray tube can separately have a different spectrum. So they can use a tin filter on one of the X-ray tubes and not on the other X-ray tube. Next up, we'll talk about temporal registration of the data. So ideally, the data would be measured at exactly the same time. And in the case of the layer detector, they're measured at exactly the same time. In the case of the fast switching, it's only a few milliseconds. So it's basically exactly the same time. And then in the case of the DL system, it's still relatively good, but it's just many views. So it's a little bit worse in terms of that temporal registration. In the case of the dual source system, we're talking about 90 degrees different. So it's not quite as good as the systems which are working directly on the projections. And then the worst is the rotate rotate systems, where in the rotate rotate system, it could take several seconds. You could have significant motion from one scan of the system to the next scan of the system. The advantage of the dual energy acquisition is the ability to do beam hardening reduction natively in your image reconstruction. And beam hardening essentially leads to an overall cupping in your image, do the beam hardening in water, and then it can lead to streaking between the objects. Really, when we do the math in dual energy imaging, we're doing the math in the projection space, in the raw data. 
There's a lot more information that we can look at there as far as the correlation of the different components. This was demonstrated by a work from the group out of the Erlangen at the time. And if you look at what's standardly used in the image space, if you use just direct image space decomposition, you can see there's significant beam hardening artifacts in terms of the shading in the image. And they presented a technique which could reduce some of those artifacts, but would require many more reconstructions to be done in order to do the imaging. And then if you look at doing it just in the projection space, this is a technique that was proposed by Alvarez. So they call that the Alvarez technique. That's kind of the gold standard to do the decomposition in the projection space directly, where you get the most reduction in beam hardening. So all the techniques that are using the projection space directly, the fast switching, the deep learning, the dual layer, those all will have an advantage in comparison with the rotate rotate or with the two tube two detector system. Automatic exposure control is the ability to change the tube current as a function of view angle. And that's possible on these systems with the exception of the fast switching system. At the current time, that's not yet been implemented, but it could be implemented in the future with a hardware upgrade on that type of a system. Shown you a number of different ways that the different vendors have gone about to do dual energy imaging. What's the system implementation that they do dual energy imaging? And each of these vendors is actually working on improvements over time of these dual energy acquisitions. So if you're on one of the given platforms, you're often seeing improvements. For instance, the two tube two detector system started off with a quite small field of view to do dual energy imaging of just 26 centimeters. And then over time, it was increased on the subsequent systems to 33 centimeters. And on the fast switching systems, on the original systems, there was a limitation of the MA that could be provided at the lower KVP. Switching back and forth, you would like the flux between your views to be matched. And on the early systems, that wasn't possible on fast switching. Subsequently, new X-ray sources have been developed, which allow for very high MAs at the low KVPs. And thus, you can now have a matching of your flux going from the low to the high energy views. So each of the vendors is actually working on improvements over time. But now you definitely know how the different system architectures work, but it's crucially important that you understand the physics or the math behind what we call the decomposition in order to make the different images that are coming out of a dual energy scanner. So see our video next on the actual physics behind dual energy imaging.